Hello everyone and welcome to the Lathrom channel. In our videos we cover filming tips, tricks and techniques, equipment and product reviews, and many other things that will help you in the world of filmmaking and photography. Check out our videos and don't forget to subscribe. What's up everybody, Matt from Lathrom here. Today we're going to be going over a video card. That's right, we are going to be a little bit of uh, testing slash reviewing the EVGA GeForce GTX 960 for the win edition. You can ignore that picture. It's not a super, super clock. It's a for the win edition. Also allow me to uh, kind of apologize for the way I'm doing this. I used a GoPro instead of screen capping or using a program to record the actual, you know, screen information, mainly because I didn't want it to bog down the computer and skew the results for the different benchmark systems that I'm going to go into. Now a little quick background, I want to tell you that I did not overclock this at all. The only thing I did, as you can see on the screen, is I adjusted and set up a new uh, fan curve. This card is the AS, I'm sorry, the ACX 2.0, which is their new cooling system, or modified cooling system I should say where basically uh, the fans are essentially turned off until it gets to a certain usage percentage. I just kind of modified the curve a little bit and what have you. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to run the OC scanner from EVGA. Nothing too crucial, but I wanted to get a very, you know, basic initial benchmark system. So 1080 with, you know, four times anti-aliasing, let it run through. This card is gonna be doing a dual purpose. It's going to do, you know, both the actual work that I have to do, such as uh, well, editing, rendering, things like that. But also I want it to, you know, I wanna have it for gaming every once in a while. So hence why I'm doing some of these benchmarks. From there, I'm gonna roll into Cinebench. Now, if you haven't come across Cinebench in the past, it's actually a really helpful tool. Now, this is something that's put out by the same people that put out Cinema 4D, so keep that in the back of your head. There's a reason why it's being utilized and why it's you know, made by the same people that Cinema 4D, or that makes Cinema 4D. It's not one of those things where it's just, oh, hey, look, you know, gaming benchmark 101, blah, blah, blah. No, it's actually an OpenGL and a CPU benchmark Now, it's actually not too horrible. I'm over 90 frames per second on my OpenGL, and the CPU looks like it's just a tad, well, much higher than a uh, 3770 uh, from Intel, since I am running an AMD processor on this. Now, we'll sit down and let this do a couple different gaming-based benchmarks, uh, strict GPU benchmarks for gaming, that is. We'll go, let it go through the different uh, levels or different scenes for our Valley Benchmark, and then after that we'll go into the 3D mark, uh, see what that gives us, which I'm going to, you know, I think I'll throw Fire Strike at it. See what it gets us, and we'll go from there. Alrighty, we're averaging just shy of 50 frames per second with Valley Benchmark which is not exactly where I wanted to see it, but as a reference card, well, not really a reference card, but as a straight out of the box, not overclocked, I haven't played with it at all. That's yeah, yeah, not too disappointing, I guess, for a $200 video card. Well, I believe it's about $220, somewhere in that ballpark. But let's run Fire Strike and see what we get from there.
Youch, a little over six and a half thousand. Yeah, 6635. I was not expecting a number that low, but at the same time, I wasn't expecting a very high number either. Like I said, it's only about a $200 video card. I'm not running it in an SLI yet, so teach their own. I'll take it with a grain of salt, if you will. Now, we have one more benchmark for you guys. Now, this is inside Blender, it's called Blendmark. We're going to run the GPU with its CUDA core power versus the CPU which obviously doesn't have any CUDA power to it. See what the render times look like. And this is, you know, kind of that work side where, you know, all the other benchmarks for the most part with this, uh, with the exception of Cinebench was all game oriented. Now we're switching over to more of a work oriented um, platform, if you will. Let's see what these uh, test numbers look like. Okay, that's actually kind of what I was expecting. I can't talk today. We got about, uh, I think it took a minute and 53 seconds to render out this BMW image with the GPU. Compare that to over five minutes to render with the eight core processor. Uh, this is a AMD uh, 8350 eight core clocked at 4.3 and change. Uh, if you were paying attention during the Cinemark, uh, the Cinebench test, you'd know exactly what I was running. Um, now, as far as my opinion goes, now granted, like I said, it's only about a $200 video card, which is not that bad. It's not gonna completely break the bank. It's nothing like a Quattro card, which is gonna set you back a couple grand. Now, the bad thing about Quattro cards is, is obviously they're not crap for gaming. Now, whenever you're coming into simix, uh, physics simulations and, you know, stuff like that, Quattro cards are, I mean, seriously, awesome. They are literally almost marching to the beat of their own drum. Now, with that being said, I kind of have to come to the halfway mark since I'm doing some gaming plus work. If only I can get my hands on some Tesla cards, I could take care of that work aspect as well and then still be able to game. But I don't have that much money laying around in my back pocket. So until that day comes, I mean, like I said, you're looking at about a $200 video card. If you run it in an SLI, you're looking about 400 bucks at the price point right now. Um, I actually picked this up for literally after tax. I believe it was like 213 and change. Not too horrible. I mean, Hell's Bells, uh, one of the last video cards that I bought uh, that kicked the popsicle stand, so to say, I think was like $300, $340 or somewhere in that ballpark. It could be much, much more expensive than I ended up paying. Now, with that being said, is it going to be the greatest card for everybody? No. Are you looking at it for strictly gaming or strictly, you know, uh, doing simulations or doing rendering? what so have you if you're doing rendering and nothing but work I'm going to tell you to sit down go get a Quattro card save up save up a lot if you can't afford a Quattro card then just get an enthusiast card get something with a high number of CUDA cores and let those things crank if you're getting this for gaming it's not going to be bad but you're not going to be able to run like ultra settings on you know, the next game that comes, and uh, maybe like, uh, well, we'll say the next Tomb Raider, because it has not come out for PC yet. I mean, it's been out for Xbox One, but it really is up to you. It's not a bad card, don't get me wrong. It's well worth the 200 bucks that I spent on it. Yeah, I can be disappointed in some areas, but in other areas, I am not. But that's about all I have for right now. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. I will get back to them as soon as I can. 
again, thank you for chime or you know coming on in and watching these videos. I do appreciate it very much. And until next time, I believe I'm going to. Uh, uh, I'll get into something. Who knows? Maybe I'll do some uh, nice, wonderful. Yeah, it is rainy. Let's go out and ride the quads. <laughs>